Hello everyone. My name is Wendy Shearer and I am a storyteller. I'm going to be telling you two wonderful fishy tales from the sea. A story, a story. Let it come, let it go. This story is called The Fisherman and the Genie. In a distant land where the desert is hot and dry by day and cold and shadowy at night, where the markets are busy and bustling with people selling their food and wares, there lived a fisherman. And this fisherman would sail his boat out to sea and catch fish to sell in the marketplace. One morning he left before the sun had even risen in the sky. He set out to sail in his small fishing boat. The waters were calm and still, and he sang his favourite song. I sail my boat through wind or rain, from dawn till dusk. I cast my net out to the sea, a fisherman's life for me. Now normally he'd cast his net and bring in a haul of fish, but on this particular day he just wasn't having any luck. His net was coming back empty and as the sun slowly began to set in the east, he was worried. I'm not going to get any fish for my supper. I'll have nothing to sell in the market. I'll make no money. He didn't know what to do. He cast his net one more time, just to give it another try. And he sat waiting in the sea. And after a while, he felt a heavy tug. And he thought, this must be a big catch. Something must be in there. And so he tried to pull. But it was so heavy, he had to stand up in his small boat. And then he, he called out, heave. Do you think you could help him? On the count of three. One, two, three. Three, heave! Oh, he still couldn't pull the net in. Let's shout heave again. Are you ready? One, two, three, heave! And still he couldn't pull the net in. One more try. Let's give it all we've got. After the count of three. One, two, three, heave! Well, all your help must have worked because this time the net was not empty but it wasn't full of fish inside the net was a pretty bronze jar hmm it looked nice enough but it certainly wasn't fish but the fisherman thought maybe he could sell it in the marketplace he looked a bit closer and he, he noticed that there was a stopper on it, so he pulled it out. As soon as he did so, clouds of blue and purple and green smoke towered above him in the sky. And it began to form the shape of a giant genie. This genie had a purple turban on his head and a bright red waistcoat dotted with golden stars. His face was furious. He had bulging eyes and a large cavernous mouth. Who dares to release me after 200 years? The genie bellowed. Well, the fisherman was down below on the ground and cowering. His legs were, were shaking and his bones were shattering and he said, it was I, I released you. Oh, the genie was not pleased. I've been locked up for over 200 years. At first I waited and I said I would reward someone if they released me. But now it has been so long, I swore to punish who would let me out. I will turn you into a toad. Oh my goodness, the fisherman couldn't believe his ears. And he had no strength or power to fight a genie. He thought this was terribly unfair. All he had was his wits and he decided to use them. Well, 
genie, if you're so powerful and mighty, let me see you transform yourself back into this tiny jar. I bet you can't do that. Are you calling me a liar? He bellowed from above. I can show you. And with one click of his fingers, the genie, with a wisp of smoke, flew back into the jar. And the fisherman took the stopper and slammed it down shut, capturing the genie once more. Well, the genie was not happy about that. He begged to be released. He begged and he pleaded. The fisherman did not want to be turned into a toad. I promise, I promise I won't do that, he cried. Do you think the fisherman should believe him? Do you think he should release the genie? Hmm. Well, after a while, the genie promised to lead the fisherman to untold treasures if he did release him. And this sounded very tempting to the fisherman. And so, after making him promise, he released the stopper. And great big clouds of purple and green and blue smoke filled the sky. It took the shape of the genie once more. But this time, his face was calm and serene. And he bowed his head respectfully to the, to the fisherman. He kept to his word and promised to lead the fisherman to untold riches. He clicked his fingers and out of the sky appeared a magical flying carpet. The fisherman couldn't believe his eyes. He rubbed them just to make sure he wasn't sleeping. But there it was, a bright red carpet with golden tassels along the edges, dotted with stars and, and crescent moons in design. He stepped onto the carpet and with the genie, they soared together high up into the sky. He was flying, flying over the desert. They looked down and, oh, they saw the most magnificent sights. Huge sand dunes, towering, towering piles of sand. And then they saw lush green valleys with sloping hills. They flew further still until they caught sight of a large shimmering blue lake. The fisherman and the genie came to land and the genie explained that inside the lake were golden, magical fishes. The fisherman walked to the edge and right before his eyes, he caught sight of these golden, shimmering, magical fishes, just as the genie had promised. There were so many of them swimming around and fluttering in the lake below. Apparently, the Sultan would pay a handsome price if you collected a couple of these golden fishes, explained the genie. And so the fisherman cast his net, singing his favourite song once more. I sail my boat from dawn till dusk, through wind or rain, it is a must. I cast my net out to the sea, a fisherman's life for me. And he caught the golden fishes in his net. He took them carefully, placed them in a bowl filled with water. And together with the genie, they flew on the magic carpet over the desert until they reached the Sultan's glorious palace. It stood towering above them, made of pure white marble. The Sultan was one of the richest men in the land and he loved to collect unusual magical objects. When he saw what the fisherman had to offer, just as the genie foretold, he presented the fisherman 
with untold treasures. Golden coins and jewels, more than he'd ever seen before. The fisherman could not believe his luck. He had set the genie free and now he was to become a wealthy man himself. He collected his reward and spent his days relaxing and singing as he wished. Thank you for listening to that story. I hope you enjoyed it. This story is called The Mermaid and Her Magical Comb. Long, long ago, when the world was filled with magic and wonder, there was a girl named Cassie. I think she was about your age. And she lived on a beautiful tropical island, surrounded by the Caribbean Sea. Now Cassie loved to spend an afternoon swimming in the river with her friends. They would splash and swim and play all kinds of games. And on this particular afternoon, the friends wanted to go quite early before the sun would get baking hot, hot during the midday. But Cassie wasn't ready to leave yet, so she told them that she would catch them up. She lingered a little while and then she got out and got dried down and put on her sandals and collected her belongings when she could hear someone humming in the distance. She wondered who that might be because her friends had gone. So she walked along the riverbank, passing the tall coconut trees and palm leaves and she peered through the bushes and she saw at first what looked like another girl. She had dark skin and thick black hair. But as Cassie got closer, she saw that the girl was quite different. From her waist down, she had the tail of a fish. And her tail had the most magnificent iridescent colours, just sparkling in the sunshine. This mermaid was sitting and looking in a mirror and combing her hair, hmm. humming to herself. <laughs> combing and combing. She didn't even notice that Cassie was looking. <laughs> well, Cassie had never seen anything like it. She was mesmerized by the mermaid but also mesmerised by the golden comb. While the mermaid placed her comb down on the rocks and then heard someone approaching, she turned around and was about to dive into the river when Cassie called out, please, please, don't go. And so she stayed a while. She thought the young girl was harmless enough, but little did she know Cassie had her eyes on that golden comb and in just an instant she snatched it from the rocks and ran. She ran through the forest, across the cocoa fields, past the cocoa plants, through the mango groves until she finally got back to her village. She went into her house and stared at now her own golden, magical comb. She thought, this must be magical. It belongs to a mermaid after all. And so she began to comb her own hair. And even though her hair was tight with thick black curls, the comb just went through it so smoothly, like a brush. And so Cassie spent hours combing and combing her hair. She went to bed that night and laid the comb next to her. And when she awoke in the morning, her head felt a little bit unusual, a little bit heavy. She got up and realised that her hair had grown so much. She had thick, full locks all the way down to her shoulders. She couldn't believe it. She tied her hair up and she went out and showed off to her siblings and her friends. They thought it was amazing. And this carried on. 
Each night when Cassie sat down and combed her hair with the golden comb, mm, it went through so beautifully. She loved it. And the next day her hair had doubled in length. Well, the poor mermaid was languishing on the rocks by the river. You see, she could not return to the water without it. It held some of her power. And Cassie did not know that the comb was enchanted. That night, Cassie went to sleep, not feeling in the slightest bit guilty that she had taken this golden comb. But as she slept, her hair grew and grew and grew and grew. And when she awoke in the morning, she felt hot and bothered and realised that she was lying on a bed of hair. Her hair had grown so thick and long, it had completely covered her bed. Well, she got the help of her sister to trim and cut the edges until it was just now tumbling down to her feet. She braided her hair and swished about all day, feeling very pleased with herself. But the next morning, after using the comb, her hair had grown even thicker and longer, and it wouldn't stop growing. Her hair just kept sprouting and sprouting out of her head until it completely filled the room. Cassie was terrified and knew that there was a curse of some sort on the golden comb. She could barely lift her head off her pillow, but she took the comb and handed it to her sister. Please go down to the river and return it to the mare mermaid. Please tell her to forgive me. I'm sorry for what I have done. Her sister asked no questions. She ran as quickly as she could. Whilst her sister's hair was growing and growing so much that it was bursting out of the windows of their home. Her sister found the mermaid languishing on the rocks, singing a solemn song. She was overjoyed when the comb was finally placed back into her hands. My sister Cassie is sorry for what she has done. Please remove the curse. And with a blink of her eye and a nod of her head, the beautiful mermaid took the comb and dived back into the river without a word. But the next morning, Cassie awoke and felt so much lighter. Her hair had stopped growing. She had never been so relieved to have her short, curly locks back. But she knew never to steal from a mermaid again.